Hey Mermico team! Today we're diving into the world of a truly spectacular species. Fierce, active, and seriously fascinating to watch, Manica rubita. If you're into ants that hunt, sting, and don't mess around, then you're going to love this one. First off, let's talk size. Queens range from 9.5 to 13 millimeters. Workers go from 5 to 8 millimeters, and males sit between 8 and 10. Even though you'll see size differences among individuals, this is a monomorphic species, no distinct major or minor cast like in other genera. One thing that might throw you off at first is how much they resemble Myrmica, but once you take a closer look, you'll notice that Manica rubita is bulkier, more solid, and clearly more aggressive. They've got a reddish body tone, a darker gaster, sometimes almost black, and their whole body is covered with long, fine hairs. The exoskeleton is beautifully sculpted, and a key detail, no spines on the propodium. Oh, oh, did I mention they've got a functional stinger, and they're not shy about using it, whether it's for hunting or defending the nest. And yes, the sting is painful. I'm talking from experience. The queen looks very similar to the workers, just a bit larger, and sometimes you might come across microgynes, which are smaller than average queens. The males are either black or very dark brown, pretty classic in appearance, but easy to spot during nuptial flights. In the wild, they're mostly found at higher altitudes, between 900 and 2,000 meters, in open areas like alpine meadows, forest edges, riverbanks, gravel patches, basically sunny and open environments. They typically nest under stones or directly in the soil, sometimes forming little mounds. And yes, some colonies are polygamous, meaning they can have multiple nest entrances. Colony size? We're talking several thousand individuals. Now, behavior-wise, these ants are absolutely thrilling. They're fast, highly aggressive, and love to hunt. They'll go after live prey, use their sting to paralyze it, and the larvae will often feed directly on the body. It's wild to see. And sometimes they'll recruit other workers when they find a good food source, kind of like from Ikadu, and they even compete with them in the wild. Colonies are usually monogyne, but polygyne cases have been observed. Interestingly, a queen can re-enter an existing nest, which is pretty rare. But here's the tricky part. The founding process is semi-claustral and independent. That means the queen needs to hunt and be fed right from the start. Small insects, sugary liquids, the works. Otherwise, the foundation fails. As for temperature, Manica rubida is quite sensitive. Their sweet spot is between 20 and 23 degrees Celsius, and they don't like overheating. And don't skip the diapause. It's absolutely mandatory. You'll need to give them three to four months at five to 10 degrees Celsius. No exceptions. This rest period is key to their biological rhythm. Their development cycle is endogenous and heterodynamic, meaning they go through distinct active and resting phases. For the setup, start with a test tube with some sandy substrate. They appreciate that. Add a mini outworld right away so you can feed the queen. As the colony grows, move them into a nest with high humidity. They thrive in 60 to 80% humidity, so make sure you keep the nest moist. Dry setups won't work well. Avoid overly porous or fast drying materials. Diet-wise, they're omnivores, but with a strong preference for fresh insects. Offer them live or freshly killed prey. They'll go for it instantly. Of course, sugary liquids are still part of the menu, but their predatory side is really what makes them so fun to raise. Nuptial flights usually happen in spring, around April or May, just after diapause. But depending on where you are, you might see flights stretching as late as August. Oh, and one more thing, Manica rubida is not a digging species, so you don't have to go overboard reinforcing your nest like with Mesor or Campanatus. But make no mistake, this is a difficult species to raise. The founding phase is delicate, the temperature range is narrow, and the diapause must be taken seriously. Definitely a species for experienced keepers. But if you get it right, you'll have one of the most dynamic, aggressive, and stunning colonies in your collection. So yeah, Manica rubida is bold, elegant, and absolutely mesmerizing. And if you made it all the way to the end of the video, drop the word stinger in the comments so I know who the real ant lovers are out there.